Welcome to the spirit world. Answering your questions on angels, demons, and how the spiritual and physical worlds interact. And now your hosts, Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. Well, hello there, and welcome to the spirit world. I am Debbie Giorgiani with religious demonologist and co-host Adam Bly, and hopefully you. This is our live call-in open forum and mailbag show today on the spirit world. Adam, we're going to dive right into the calls and um, and the questions that have come in um, by email and on Facebook, but we always begin, Adam, with the St. Michael prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I was going going to say start calling, but you already have. That's the way it rolls here on at the Spirit World. So way to go, team. Here is the number to call in for this open forum show for this month of August. And we are um, fast. Um, it's closing quickly, Adam, August, and we're moving right into the fall. We've got a lot of uh, new shows planned for our Spirit World listeners, so that's exciting. But right now it's an open forum mailbag show, so you can send your comment in via Facebook at the Spirit World Podcast. You can always email us TSW at GRN, that stands for Guadalupe Radio Network, GRNonline.com, or you can call us. Here is the number. Ready? Let's go. 877 757 9424. We have the show team in place, our producer, Taylor Van Est. He does a great job. Our senior producer, Tim Mott, he is fabulous, um, overseeing everything. And then Carol uh, Herrera is our call screener today with her team, which is wonderful. So um, already answering calls are coming in pretty fast now, 877-757-9424. But before we, we begin, Adam, uh, let's do a little um, recap of the wonderful full of Truth Conference in San Antonio, Texas. Miracles do happen. We both got to speak at that conference. Fifteen hundred, almost fifteen hundred folks uh, in attendance. I understand they're gobbling up the um, the videos uh, that that are for sale after the conference. Um, we had an amazing. Would you share with everyone the amazing relic that you had with you during the conference that? Um, at last I checked, I think at, 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 you know, during the whole course of the conference, there was at least 20, 25 people in line to, to venerate that relic. Yeah, sure. Um, so sometimes when, when we do conferences, I'll bring a relic along, one that, of course, we have papers on and that has been validated as, as uh, legitimate. And this particular one is uh, bones of 11 of the 12 apostles. John's tomb was empty when they opened it, or it had bread in it, depending on the tradition um, that you follow on that. And uh, a stone from Mary's Dormition, the tomb that she was laid in, that she ascended from, a piece of Joseph's vestment, and also the bones of Anna and Joachim, Mary's parents. So kind mm -hmm. of the Immaculate Conception. So it's kind of like a lot of the early church all in one uh, reliquary. Mm -hmm. How how old was it? What was the year you said? Um, I'd have to check, but I think it's 1807. It was uh, put together uh, wow. over in Rome by a wow. very very high official. It, it, that kind of thing generally is is put together by people that are that are high up and have you know the influence to gather mm -hmm. all those together. Well, people were in line. Um, uh, constantly throughout the entire conference, and they were putting their their rosaries and their crucifixes up against the the teka. Is that is that how you say it? The teka. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I think it was probably more than a thousand people total came through. Came which through. Was, yeah. Which and and made third class relics, which is that's wonderful. It's it's mm -hmm. I you know I hope that that brings some grace and you know who knows if we'll hear about um, healings or other things related to that. But um, right. yeah, it was it was wonderful. 
Right. Amazing. So it was a great conference. Um, I do believe it's, it, it's an anointed conference, the fullness of truth. Uh, um, so many things, people had some great epiphanies and revelations and aha moments. Um, I got to speak about blessed Carlo Acutis and, um, it was uh, just, just fascinating and, and fabulous. And I, I really truly felt him, um, to be there, um, you know, smiling on all of the, of uh, all of the conference. So we're going to be speaking speaking more about this great uh, 15-year-old um, saint, Blessed Carlo Acutis, on an upcoming show. So we'll be de- dealing with more of that and, and what it means uh, to go to heaven, how to get to heaven, how to bypass purgatory. I mean, all sorts of things that are that are just fascinating from our, our young uh, saints and our older saints that we look, that we look up to um, that have been around for centuries. So um, we do have a couple open phone lines. Carol and the team, they're doing a great job screening calls. And um, it is is our open forum mailbag show. It's we are live today uh, through the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. We hope that you call in at 877-757-9424. And we will mix in some of the comments and questions that have come in through Facebook. Please like us on the Facebook page at the Spirit World Podcast. Okay, Adam, are you ready? I'm ready, Deb. Let's go. Uh- Okay, let's go to Peggy. Peggy is first, and Peggy is calling in from South Carolina on the EWTN.com. Uh, Hi, Peggy. Welcome to the Spirit World. Well, hello, and thank you for offering this this wonderful and very rare attempt uh, forum for spiritual warfare. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So what's your question or comment today? Um, my Catholic Church sponsored, along with Lutherans and I think maybe a Baptist church, uh, five women, a family from Nigeria, and I volunteered to take one of them to a doctor's appointment. And as I was waiting for them to get ready in their bookshelf, and only half of them really speak any English, was a book that said Encyclopedia of Magic and Witchcraft. And it really disturbed me. And I worried about what was going on in the house. Are these people practicing? You know, coming from Nigeria, I think it's possibly their culture. But I did pray with them on the way, and the mother in the back said, Amen. But what what do I do with this information? Mm. Okay, Peggy. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say for sure. Um, I would probably bring it to the attention of the people that were sponsoring them and and had them in the home. And I would probably let the pastor of the parish know about that. The pastor is probably the person to look into it and see what might be going on. Um, We don't want to jump to conclusions, you know, for sure. There may be an explanation why they had that book. Um, You know, some people have legitimate reasons to have reference books in order to research things. So, for instance, there's there's a chance that they were researching um, curses here in the United States that we would we would, you know, see as falling under witchcraft in the West versus the African version of things. I know in Africa, there's there's a strong um, generally most people believe in curses and the spirit world as a reality. And so, for instance, they may have been researching things. So we don't want to jump to conclusions, um, but, you know, charitably let the pastor know so he could check into it. Do you feel a need besides me? I mean, I have spiritual warfare information. I kind of did it my own deliverance prayer. I mean, do you feel like that's all I need to worry about? Exposing well, for your- yourself? Yeah, for yourself, you don't have anything to worry about. You didn't make any act of your will inviting or consenting to anything. You didn't, you know, bring an object from there that may have been cursed with you. You don't have anything to worry about, especially if you're in a state of grace. I'm just saying you probably have a a moral obligation to let the pastor know and then, you know, let him decide how to look into it. Thank you very much. Sure thing, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. God bless you. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend. Thank you. And now Peggy's going to free up a phone line for you to call in. Uh, Lori will answer your call. She's doing a fine job at 877-757-9424. Please call us. This is our open forum mailbag show uh, today during the month of August. Um, it's very important that we get to as many people as possible and your questions and comments. We will group them up together, um, the ones that are that are similar 
so that we can answer just in a general way. Everybody's got uh, different details, Adam, and we understand that. But please know that we're trying our best to address all of the uh, different uh, situations that you're involved in or you um, interact with people or in, you're engaged in or the demonic activity that may be uh, circulating. We want to address it. So please... Um, Please know that we'll try our hardest to answer in a general way, just so you can feel more at peace. Right, Adam? That's the key, right? To focus on God and to be at peace, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we don't want to focus on being scared of the spirit world or focus on like um, the kind of defensive and, and um, anxious approach to this. The focus is Jesus. He is in charge. He does allow certain things because he allows us to exercise our free will. And then, you know, the things that are disturbing that can happen, they draw us back to God because they show us the, the truth of these of these fallen creatures. And then that allows us to go back to Jesus with a better understanding. And so we don't want to see it as a negative and scary thing as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. Don't forget, you can leave your um, your comments on uh, our Facebook uh, page. We're trying to grow the family there uh, at the Spirit World Podcast. Or if you'd like to call us and be on air with us today, now is the time um, to do it. Here is the number, 877-757-9424. Coming up next is Christina and Heidi and the others. So hang on, you guys. We will get to you on the other side of the break. This is the Spirit World. Please stay with us. Are you feeling lost in a sea of overwhelm? Hi, this is Coach Felicity with Stand Tall Today Coaching Minute. Many people find themselves challenged with overwhelm. Too many things to take care of, too many people to please, too much work to do. And in spite of their best efforts, they continue to fall behind with this overwhelm coming in like a flood. But that's not the abundant life that Jesus wants you to live. That's why Stand Tall Today has experienced professional coaches that will assist you in dialing down that overwhelm. They'll help you get a grasp on where you are and create a plan that enables you to take bite-sized steps of action so you can live an abundant life. Why not take your first step right now? Go to StandTallToday.com and find a coach that is just right for you. Because life is simply too short to stay lost in a sea of overwhelm. This is Coach Felicity with your Stand Tall Today Coaching Minute. Does Jesus condemn praying the rosary in Matthew 6, 7 when he says, as the King James renders it, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do? Protestants think so. What's the Catholic response? First, Jesus is not condemning repetitious prayer per se. If he were, well then he would be condemning himself, since according to Mark 14, 39, he prayed multiple times, Father, remove this cup, not what I will, but what you will. But that's absurd. So what was Jesus condemning? He was condemning Gentile prayers, which were mindless repetitious prayers, as the Greek text suggests. The Gentiles recited prayers only to appease their gods. They were, as the RSV translates it, empty phrases, having nothing to do with expressing one's love for the gods. That's what Jesus is condemning, not the repetitious prayer of the rosary. I'm Carlo Broussard with the ready reason for Catholic Answers, Catholic.com. The Spirit World continues with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. If you have a question for the show, call 877-757-9424 or email tsw at grnonline.com. We're so glad you're with us on The Spirit World. We are live today. This is our open forum mailbag show. We do it once a month, sometimes twice a month, depending on how many... Um, 
uh, comments and, and questions and uh, different um, um, emails come in about uh, different topics, we will sometimes address it twice and open up the phone lines. And then um, so many of you have sent in messages saying, how exactly does the format work? You guys are so awesome. I love that you're te- kind of taking ownership of the show. I think that's wonderful. Cause that's exactly what Adam and I wanted for this show is for you to feel uh, very much a part of the development of this, of the spirit world. Um, so here's how it works. When we have the open forum shows, start calling right away at the beginning of the show. Okay. We dive right into the calls and the questions and the comments. Okay. That that's, that's the way we roll. Okay. But when we have a certain theme or a topic, we will do a short teaching on it. Adam and I go back and forth. We kind of ping pong back and forth of what, what we feel strong and what we would like. We pray about it and what we would, um, we really believe God wants all of us to hear during the, that teaching portion, that catechesis of, of the topic, like the blessed mother or the, you know, guardian angels, a truth of our faith, um, something of that nature. And then we open up the phones. So, uh, that's how it works. So you, you kind of take note of it at the beginning of the show. Right now, we're answering your calls. Um, so any comments on that, Adam, before we get back to the, the phones? No, that's perfect. Um, good summary, Deb. And yeah, I, I just, and I appreciate everybody's patience um, when we do the teaching. I know we get calls right away when we're doing a teaching, but we also feel it's important to kind of focus a show around a particular theme and then give people hopefully a deeper catechesis than than most people have had in the past. And yeah, we just want to we want to try to maximize how much you get out of the show. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay, as promised, we will go to Christina, and Christina is calling in from Savannah, Georgia, listening on the EWTN app. Hi, Christina. Thanks for waiting, and welcome. Hey, um, I'm just making sure you can hear me. Yes, perfectly. Go right ahead. Okay, great. Um, well, I, it's something that I experienced a long time ago, and um, uh, just curious if it's something that you guys have come across before, um, maybe behind, but, you know, some of the reasoning. But um, I experienced uh, where um, I, was, I was driving by a cemetery, um, and it's actually where, like, my family members um, are um, at the cemetery, uh, and all the entrances were, I guess, guarded. I saw angels at every entrance on each side, um, and and they were. And I just remember, you know, it's just something I've always thought about. Um, uh, they were very large, almost like in um, like a tire, as in. I guess you would think of like Roman, like soldiers, but I mean, they had like, like full like gear on. And I, I saw them at all the entrances to the cemetery. Okay. So um, if you'd allow me to ask, have you had experiences like this before in any other way? Yes. I, I'm, I'm, and I listen to you every week. Um, yes, I have. But uh, I was like, well, you know what? I would maybe we'll start calling and asking about one of them. And yes, mm-hmm. I've had m- many experiences. Um, but but yes, this one I always think about, you know, just as a, um, just the fact that they were I, I really don't know if that is some some type of significance, but I saw them at all the entrances of the cemetery. Okay, Christina. So, you know, of course, um, one of the, one of the possibilities is is that that's a hallucination. Of course, that's just a possibility. You sound like a very rational and reasonable person. Your thinking seems to be. Um, you know, cogent, and you're staying on topic. And so there's, there's not other indications, at least in this brief interaction, um, that it, that it may be a mental illness. Now, remember, if you're receiving visions from God, you're receiving them, you know, for a reason. And so I would more explore in yourself and your own spirituality, what does that point to for you? Um, One possibility, regardless of yourself is, you know, if that is a consecrated uh, cemetery, you know, it's a Catholic cemetery where the ground is consecrated, it would make sense in theory that angels would be guarding that ground because remember a person from a Christian perspective is a body and a soul together. And when we die, our soul is separated from our body and goes to our judgment. But at the 
final coming of Christ, they will be reunited in a glorified body. And so the bodies of the baptized that are there, if assuming that's a consecrated cemetery, Catholic cemetery, are continue to be important to God. And and we see clues about this in, in the way relics have had, you know, brought about so many miracles over the years. And so that is part of their personhood, even though the body is dead right now, separated from the soul, uh, that is still part of the person. And so it would make sense uh, that angels would guard that place, in theory. Yep. Okay, well, very good. Thank you. Um, I'm, like I said, I listen to you every week. And I would like to share at some point, I know you guys have lots of calls, so I, I will call in again um, just to receive a let, little clarity on some of the experiences. But thank you for sure. Well, before you go, uh, Christina, let me just ask this question. Um, I I had to uh, um, step away from the mic for just a second to answer a, another question that was coming in, Adam. Very, uh, it was an urgent question. But did you address with Christina because when she was sharing about possibly, um, you know, encountering a manifestation of an angel at a cemetery? Wouldn't that be a, a call for her to pray for souls in purgatory? Did you address that? I just want to make sure. No, I was going to right okay, now, please Deb, do, actually. Please. Yeah. So, so the additional thing, and this is true for all of us, not just Christina, when God gives us um, basically a, a mystical experience or a glimpse into the spirit world, when it's coming from God, it, it always not only is edifying to the person, but it's a prompting for growth in some area of your spiritual journey with God. And so in this case, it happened to be around a cemetery. Mm -hmm. And then I would try to follow that prompting as opposed to just saying, okay, well, that's God telling me more about, you know, the relationship and the body and the soul and being a whole person. And, you know, some of these souls are in heaven and so their bodies are protected. It goes beyond that to say, okay, well, what about me? And what is God prompting me to do? And as Deb just said, exactly right on that's the first place my mind went and that is to pray for the dead and so most of those people are probably in purgatory probably we don't know the percentage but they need prayers and Mm -hmm. so that could be their guardian angels you know in a sense still protecting the body which is part of the person that they were charged with you know helping them through the journey of life and so that could be guardian angels prompting christina to pray for the dead Mm -hmm. yeah well, thank you. Um, I, I do think that's very important. And I have just recently returned to my um, my Catholic faith. Uh, I was raised Catholic, and and that was very important to me um, back then. But I was away for a while, and in the last year or so, um, so you guys are part of. I, I listen to you every week. Oh, um, thank you. Part of an, an returning. But again, thank you for taking my call. Well, yeah, and I, if it were me, Christina, I would I would take that as an invitation for you to to deepen um, your prayers for the the souls in purgatory and for those that don't have anyone to pray for them. I would get masses said for that whole entire cemetery. You can do that. You could go and and for everybody that's buried there. I mean, so you you would be giving a great gift to so many souls. And and like Adam said, if they're already in the beatific vision then those are applied somewhere else it could even benefit you and your family so it's it's i think that's pretty cool okay, well, very good. Thank you so much. okay god bless you thank you christina call us again please okay um so guys i everybody kind of knows me from take two that i have a, a very big heart and when somebody's in an urgent need i i you know immediately go there um the, there's a little bit of a problem and that is that this is a live call-in show so i can't step away and address an urgent situation that's coming in in real time so here's what i would suggest uh please call the um show number that's 877-757-9424 if you're having an urgent situation happening right now that's unfolding speak to Lori speak to uh, Carol they will get the information and we will make sure if it, um, we will get back to you after the show okay if you can just hang on just be praying and um, uh, the show goes very quickly so I understand there's some and Adam apparently there's um, a little bit of a heightened activity could this be because we're get, uh, fast approaching Halloween I mean what people's Halloween decorations are out all sorts of things are happening I don't know is there any connection there um, probably not yet. We're probably not close enough to that. It is a big satanic feast day and, and within witchcraft it is, but 
Um, probably not yet. It's a little bit far off for that. Okay. And, you know, Deb, of course, if there's anybody out there, if you're having an emergency where, where somebody's life is in danger or you feel that, that you're in danger or harming yourself, you need to call 911 immediately exactly. um, and get the situation stabilized. And when in doubt, call 911, because if you don't know if it's spiritual or if it's mundane, but somebody's in danger, you need to just rule out the mundane and call 911 for sure. I totally agree. Absolutely. And then also, if you have some questions about the faith and and you want to um, go deeper into your Catholic understanding, um, you know, there are some great shows uh, out there on the lineup. Uh, Catholic Answers Live is fantastic. Um, Call to Communion, Dr. David Anders, Open Line. I mean, great shows that can really help answer uh, the questions that you have about the Catholic faith. We will happily do our best, but we are really primarily focused on uh, the spirit world that's angels and demons and you know everything in between so um, if you have a, a call about that and then also too like Adam said if you have a problem with your family that somebody's dabbling in the occult um, please uh, go to your parish priest it's very important that you bring this to your local parish and tell them what's going on don't be embarrassed you know you want you want that spiritual uh, reinforcement and help and prayers from your parish priest that is the proper line of authority. Right, Adam? Do you want to say anything about that before we go back to the phones? No, that's right on, Deb. Okay, perfect. Um, so Taylor's going to give me uh, how much time we have before break. I think like two minutes. So we'll get started. How about this? We'll get started with Heidi in San Diego, California on EWTN.com. Hi, Heidi. Thanks. Let's get started. And then if we can hold you through the break, that would be great. Welcome. Good morning. Um, my son is 32, and he is um, immersed in the occult in that he's a, bapti- he's a baptized Catholic, confirmed, uh, and he is seeing Jesus as a master, not as God. Um, he is contacting spirits that he thinks are light beings. Uh, he is meditating hours daily. And it's it's a bit frightening. And uh, anyway, mm-hmm. that's why I'm calling today. Okay. So, Heidi, hang on. You hear the music. Taylor's right on cue there. We have to uh, just hit the pause button. When we come back, Adam will comment first. And I'm sure there's going to be more details about this that we're going to be asking you about your situation with your son. So hang on. If somebody else wants to join in and ask a question, now is the time to do it. 877-757-9424. We are the open forum mailbag show today. So please call us and stay. Stay with us to hear the answer about Heidi's situation with her son. We'll be right back. Have you heard about life coaching? Hi, this is Coach Felicity with your Stand Tall Today Coaching Minute. Coaching is one of the things Jesus did with his disciples. Whenever they were stuck, overwhelmed, or even struggling a bit, Jesus asked questions that brought clarity and hope. He then used ongoing conversations that helped them to navigate the path and completely change their lives. Just like the disciples, we too can find ourselves feeling stuck, overwhelmed, and struggling a bit. Maybe you need help in your marriage or with a parenting issue. You're navigating a loss, you want to improve your health, or advance your career. At StandTallToday.com, our experienced coaches will help you to take another look at life, renew your hope, get past those challenges, and step into living abundantly. You can find out more about coaching and schedule a free introductory call by visiting us at StandTallToday.com. Listen, life is too short to stay stuck. Contact us at StandTallToday.com. This is a Messy Family Minute with Mike and Alicia Hernan. How do you keep God in your mind once you're done with prayer and daily mass? It's different for each of us, but one tool we've learned to use in our family is Christian music. Whether you're working around the house or driving the car, it's far more uplifting to listen to than the overplayed secular love songs, and God can speak to you through it. It's amazing how transformative good Christian music can be. Music can help us memorize scripture and remind us of the providence of God throughout the day. It can teach kids the Bible in a way that they love, and kids can make music their own. 
As they grow up, encourage your children to pick out Christian music that they personally can relate to. There's all different genres, from chant to country to contemporary. St. Paul exhorts us, sing psalms, hymns, and inspired songs to God from your hearts. Music can help deepen your love for God and lift your spirit to Him throughout the day. Try it this season and see. To find more resources for your family, visit us at MessyFamilyMinute.org. The Spirit World continues with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. If you have a question for the show, call 877-757-9424 or email tsw at grnonline.com. Okay, I told you this hour goes very quickly, but you can jump in um, if you want to ask a question during this open forum uh, monthly show, 877-757-9424. That's the number to call. You'll speak to Lori or Carol. They're wonderful. Um, So I just wanted to share because you guys are, you guys have big, big hearts and you're big into prayer. And I love that, which Adam and I love that about the Spirit World listeners. So thank you. Um, You guys are praying the urgent uh, situation situation that is unfolding right as we're doing this show we've got it under control there they we've gave gave them the the information they need to contact uh, a priest so we're good okay so thanks you guys but keep praying for this family please um see this is how this happens with live call-in shows um so everybody's um feeling comfortable and addressing their situations. And that's what we wanted to do um, with this show so that we can feel at peace moving through this, this crazy thing called life. Okay. We're speaking with Heidi in San Diego. She is sharing a story about her son who's dabbling in the occult. Adam, would you like to comment first before we go back to Heidi? Sure, Deb. So yeah, Heidi, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, This is sadly very common these days. There's um, this is kind of a, it's one attack on the Christian where different versions of the occult will attack the relationship with Jesus by lowering him to the status of being one of many wise people down through time, often saying, you know, him and the Buddha were the same um, in the sense that they were they were gifted teachers, but nothing more. And that's attacking the divinity of Jesus, of course. So... Um, what can you do about it? Well, he's 32. He has his own free will. He has a big advantage in that he's baptized, which is a permanent, cannot be changed, cannot be removed, uh, ontological change in the soul that makes him an adopted child of God. And so he is in the body of Christ no matter what. And he's also confirmed, which brings about the activation of the graces received at baptism. And so he's been he's been given the grace to do what he was put here to do. Now, those are all the great advantages that he has. You have a great advantage in that as his mother, you have a particular uh, efficacy in praying for him. You don't have full authority over him. You can't speak for him spiritually because he's over the age of reason, but you can pray for him in a particularly powerful way. And so, number one, I would try to not be anxious, try to trust in Jesus, and and a little bit be at peace with this. And then my, my suggestion would be the rosary. I would say, you know, maybe two rosaries a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, for his... Um, con- basically his conversion in a sense, his ongoing conversion, meaning him to become aware of the things that he is interacting with and the truth of what they are. Mary has been a great figure that in many different stories that I've heard over the years of of Satanists and people that have been gone very far down the dark kind of road being brought back, it's often through, uh, you know, an invocation of Mary's assistance in some way. And because he's baptized and confirmed, she's his mother. And so I would do that, and then I would also have a Mass said maybe once per week with an intention of him to wake up to what he is doing. Mm-hmm. What do you Thank think, Thank you Heidi? very much. I'm writing this all down. Okay. Um, well, Heidi... It gives me a lot of hope. I appreciate yeah. it. 
Heidi, you can go back and listen to the uh, the show in the archives. So so in, and you could also pick it up on our Facebook page. So at, at and also on the um, EWTN archives, the Guadalupe Radio Network archives as well. So you can listen to it over and over again. But Heidi, I've got a little suggestion. I agree with everything Adam says, and and I agree with, and I think you should do it immediately. Another thing, I w- does he live in your home, Heidi? He did. He does not now. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So then he is completely on his own. Then I would definitely uh, ramp up the novenas and, and I would get uh, folks together to, to, te- to um, their strength in numbers when, when it comes uh, with dedicated prayer, I believe. And, and I think that you can see a lot of forward movement. Adam, tell me what you think about this. When you, when you get other people who, who love your son, care about you, Heidi, care about your situation, praying for that specific intention to free him from this. What do you say to that? Adam. Well, and you know, look at the gift God has given us, Deb and, and Heidi, and that is here we are, and we're, we're talking to a lot of people. So for those of you out there that wish to, you can pray for the conversion of Heidi's son. You don't need to know his name. Um, you can just pray for the conversion of Heidi's son. And there you go. There's a, a tidal wave of prayer um, mm-hmm. to assist him and to assist others that are being seduced into uh, this lie that is given to people. Right. And the last thing I would share too, and tell me what you feel about this, Adam, I want to make sure this is, this is coming from me, from a mother's heart, Heidi. Um, and I was in religious education for over 25 years. And so I've, I, I've, I've heard a lot of these stories. Um, uh, I, I would also say to your son, if you have a good relationship with him, I would say, son, I love you so very much as your mother. When you find yourself when, not if, but when you find yourself in a confused state or something's going wrong or you don't feel right about, you know, yourself or you feel a little depressed or life or please come to me because I believe I know the reason why. I don't know if you said that to her. What do you feel about, I said that to him, Heidi? Uh, but what do you feel about what I just shared with, with Heidi, uh, Adam, before Heidi comments? Yeah, for sure. Um, because it's, it's that relationship is is going to be kind of a big part of the bridge of of clarity and coming back and yeah he needs to know that you love him regardless of what he's getting involved in that your love is not conditional um because there is there is going to come a moment where he's going to have a shock and find out that these things are not his friends and you want him to feel comfortable reaching out to you when that happens. Right. And we just got uh, a message that just came in from one of the spirit world listeners. She's an an incredible, an incredible woman of God, Heidi. And she just said, tomorrow is the feast of St. Monica. Please tell Heidi to pray to her. She's the saint to bring children back to the faith. That makes me cry. (laughs) Yeah, uh, thank you. That that makes me cry. That's a wonderful reminder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, you have a lot of love around you, Heidi. We're, believe me, we're all in the same boat. We're the mystical body of Christ. If you're hurting, we're hurting. If you're rejoicing, we're rejoicing. Okay, we're in this together. Thank you very, very much. Absolutely. God bless thank you, Heidi. You. Yes, thank you, Heidi. Okay, Heidi called 877-757-9424. Mary is asking um, about ghost tours. Adam, Adam, I I spoke to you about this at the beginning of the show. There's a lot of things on TV, uh, ghost hunting, ghost tours, ghost shows, ghost everything. Um, what, what do you, th- what do you say about that, about these photographs that are being taken where they're s- seeing images of ghosts, you know, sightings and all sorts of stuff. How dangerous is it? Maybe give us like a scale of one to 10. How dangerous should we turn it off? Should we run from it? What should we do? Yeah. So the ghost hunting, yeah, the, the short answer is no, don't go on the ghost tours ever. The long answer is this is literally the definition of necromancy and necromancy means calling the dead in order to communicate with them and for any bible believing christian this is explicitly forbidden in the bible and it describes that god's um kind of thought about this practice is that he finds it abhorrent and he will cut you off from his people and turn his face away from you so basically it's a big violation of the first commandment because what you're doing is you're telling god 
I don't trust you. I'm not going to wait on you. I want confirmation of the afterlife on my terms when I want it from this other created spirit as opposed to the creator. And so when you do that, you're, you're saying, I want to break my friendship with God and start a friendship with this created spirit that is going to give me confirmation of the afterlife or comfort me in some way. Mm -hmm. And so it is such a serious thing. Um, and I, I'm not going to get into details, but you know, Early on, I, I knew a number of the paranormal celebrities, the people uh, that made a lot of the shows over the years, and there were consequences in their lives. And Hollywood doesn't put that part out before the people because it's mm -hmm. not attractive to sell advertising and all of that. But there are consequences for ghost hunting. It is not playing around with the souls of dead people. Those are demons pretending to be uh, dead people and sometimes pretending to be holy angels. I hope I read this comment that's coming in. Um, it's pretty. It's coming in pretty quickly on um, our our Zoom chat because we're all we're we are connected by video. Adams in uh, Pennsylvania. I'm in Arizona, and then of course the Guadalupe Radio Studios is it. We're broadcasting out of Houston, Texas, um, going out into the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network, um, but. Via Zoom, we're having a real-time chat happening with calls and comments that are coming in of folks that don't want to go on on the air. We understand that, but I just want to make sure that I'm reading this correctly. So one of our callers uh, said that they actually take photographs of these beings and then they start to pray for them. Adam, I would, I mean, you tell me what 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 your expert opinion is on this, but I would just say, you know. I would not be taking photographs of this. I would not get into this. This is dangerous because you're going to start looking for things. And there's so many ways that we can be tricked by stuff like this. And now we're led down a path that we're just, we're off focus. What do you say to that? Yeah. You know, over the years I've had innumerable people send me photographs that they claim, you know, there's some spiritual entity in them. They're almost always either uh, lens flare, a long exposure, so it's distorted, or it's dust or other particles near the flash of the camera that makes it look like a bright orb, that kind of thing. But the greater danger, Deb, besides just being uh, confused about what you're seeing, is that it leads people to think they're interacting with spirits. And sometimes there are spirits interacting with them because mm -hmm. in many cases of oppression, people that, that have gone down this road, they collect these photos and then they dwell on them. And what they're essentially doing is telling the demonic, I want a manifestation of something unusual in this photo. That's tantamount to asking them to speak to you or using a Ouija board or anything else because you're asking the demonic, I want an extraordinary manifestation as a proof of the spirit world. And so it's, it's really, again, it comes back to violating the first commandment. Mm -hmm. I always have people delete it all and get rid of it don't go looking for signs. You know, Jesus was clear about this. He did signs, he did healings, and that was for the benefit of the people. But he said better to have faith and not rely on signs. And when it, when it comes to these things, uh, it's basically, it's the demonic, because the rare times God allows the souls in purgatory to petition people for prayers, that's almost always somebody who has properly prepared themselves to do so. Uh, priests, religious, you know, happening in monasteries and, and convents and things like that. Um, this, this is either misunderstanding or it's the demonic, almost certainly. Okay. And I'm trying to go fast, folks. I, I promise you we're going to try to get to all of the calls today. We're going to move. It's like a lightning round going as fast as we possibly can. Um, but we are getting comments that are coming in via this chat. Um, so I'm going to try to respect your privacy only because you are ministering at the parish. Uh, so uh, a, a, a lady just uh, wrote in about uh, somebody at the parish. Listen to this, Adam. Somebody at, the, at their parish is paid by people to talk to the dead. Please help me to get to the pastor who knows about this to know how dangerous this is. So apparently there's somebody at the parish that this person ministers with, and this person is, is being paid to talk to the dead. Adam, speak to that, please. Right. So the pastor being, you know, he does have a certain authority there for sure as a pastor. In fact, quite a significant authority. And therefore, if he already knows about this and is misguided and thinks that it's okay, it's actually incumbent upon you 
not to, you know, don't think of it as ratting him out and like being bad, but you really need to let the bishop's office know what he's doing because that's a matter of discipline within the church at this point by promoting something that is directly against church teaching and, and against scripture. We know that mediumship and talking to the dead is forbidden and it's against scripture. And so really the bishop's office, the central office here, diocese, sometimes called the chancery, sometimes called the pastoral center, um, just find that number. You don't expect to talk to the bishop personally, but you know, get to somebody at the diocese, let them know what's going on, because this is a matter of church discipline, and they need to be the ones that intervene. You can't go and tell the pastor what to do, um, but they can intervene and, and help correct and um, you know, basically get this right, because that is definitely a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as promised, we'll go back to the phones. Diane is up next in Austin, Texas on EWTN.com. Diane, thanks for waiting and welcome. Good morning. Um, I was wondering if you could talk more, Adam, about third class relics. What do they mean? And do they have the same type of properties that first class relics have in terms of um using them in terms of prayer and healing and things like that? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, with relics, and and by the way, you know, a shout out to my good friend, Father Carlos Martins, who is certainly the the most authoritative and greatest expert on relics we have in the West, certainly in North America. Um, So, you know, he's the person that I've learned from. Still have a lot more to learn. But first class is an actual part of the body, hair, bone, uh, some part of the actual person, um, the, the body part of the person of that saint. Second class is something that they owned. So it could be a piece of their clothing, that kind of thing. And third class is anything that's been touched to a first or a second class relic. Now, in terms of miracles happening and reports of miraculous events connected with relics, of which there are many, my understanding from Father is that there's no difference between first, second, and third. And that makes sense. We're not talking about a religious, uh, sorry, magical talisman that, you know, we wave and and it's like a magic wand that has an effect. This is God responding to prayer um, and the intercession of this particular saint. So you're kind of asking that saint to pray for you and with you when you're using relics. Typically, people will touch and hold relics looking for a healing. What they're really doing is they're asking that, that saint to pray for them. And by being in contact with that saint in a special way, with an actual part of that saint, you are in contact with that person in a special way. And we know they're in the beatific vision. They're standing before God. And so it's a special way to appeal to somebody who is standing before God for their prayers. Second and third class, there's no difference in reports of miracles. And so, but again, what I'm trying to get through, Diane, is that don't focus on it like a magical talisman, but focus on it as an aid to your prayer. It's your relationship with God. It's God providing the miracles and the healings. It's it's not saying like, oh, this thing here is what's doing it. Right. And it's your faith, right, Adam? You want to stress that because Scripture mm-hmm. tells us it's it's your faith, the strength of your faith. Diane, you waited a really long time to get on air with us today. So if you have another follow-up question, uh, we're going to offer that to you because you, you oh, were so patient. You. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, let let me just say that I was at the Fullness of Truth Conference. It was amazing. Anybody, whoever gets an opportunity to go, go. And I know the DVDs are online, and I got your books, Adam, and we're reading through them. And it was an amazing conference. It it was Mm -hmm. life-changing. Oh, good. um, I just encourage all Catholics to to go to a pilgrimage, go to a conference, get, get... rejuvenated in your Mm -hmm. faith. It was just really good. Mm And it was beautiful to come together where we didn't, we weren't social Mm -hmm. distancing, you know, we were really in community. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with you, Mm -hmm. Diane, Um, many, many great relationships and friendships 
um, were were fostered, and and it was, the fellowship was amazing. And people were just like you were walking away saying, "Wow, I feel I feel like I can. I'm supercharged." You know, I I it's it's amaz- It was amazing the the type of energy um, that mm-hmm. was there at the conference, and I really believe the Holy Spirit was flowing because a lot of people said that you know a, a lot of aha moments came to them about their own their own lives, their spiritual life, their families. Um, so that was amazing. Thanks, Diane, for affirming that. I know the fullness of truth folks will be really happy to hear that. Well, you're welcome. It To me, it reminded me of what heaven was going to be like sitting in adoration and benediction with that huge crowd of people and hearing everybody praying and praising God. I thought, this is what heaven is going to be like, but bigger. It was just so amazing. Mm-hmm. And it was just a conference room, but yet it was holy ground and why it was because of of the people coming together, the community and what we were doing together with each other, with Jesus. And it, it was holy ground. It was sacred space. It was amazing. Yeah. And you know, Jesus is there in a special way in the Eucharist and, and that, that mm-hmm. makes, that makes it holy. But you know, Diane, let me just say, um, we don't just encourage Catholics to come to conferences like this. You know, non-Catholic Christians, Protestants, please come. People that are atheists, please come. People that are involved in other religions, please come and learn about the Catholic faith. The Fullness of Truth conferences are there, and they're meant to to catechize and share the faith spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, uh, with anybody. And so this isn't barred to you um, if you're if you're practicing any other religion or philosophy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. I couldn't help but think of a lot of my friends that have left the Catholic Church, and I kept thinking, gosh, if they just attended this conference, Mm -hmm. oh my goodness, it would be so life-changing for them Mm -hmm. just to hear the information and to be there in the, the communal prayer was just, it was just amazing. Right, right. So thank you. Thank you you for everything you guys did. Yeah. So, oh, thank you, Diane. Uh, Diane, um, you, it makes me chuckle because just yesterday uh, a friend was asking where Adam and I were recently, and I told I told them I said, and they and they have um, a little bit stepped away from the Catholic faith, and they said, oh, you is there a video of of the two of you speaking and and what happened? I said, yeah. So I'm going to send that to them for Christmas, Diane. So there, you gave gave me. It, it, I agree. It's a great idea to well, spread yeah. spread the word. Yep. I did too. I I. I, I I go online to buy the the talks and sending them to friends. In fact, today I'm mailing a package to a dear friend, and um, I just yeah, keep it going just to hear everybody. Yeah, yeah just to yeah. keep it going. Amen. Well, Diane, stay in touch with us. You're you're a beautiful soul. We appreciate it so very much. And thanks for waiting pretty much most of the show to get on air with us. God bless um, you guys. Thank you. You God bless you. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to get to Sarah in just a moment. I wanted to share with our listeners a couple ways you can um, provide a a question or comment for a future show. Go to Facebook at the Spirit World Podcast. Like us there. You can also email us, tsw at grnonline.com. It goes right to our producer, Taylor Van Est. He does a great job fielding the comments and the emails coming in. Okay, we we do have almost full phone lines again. Uh, that's the way it happens here on the spirit world. So let's move to Sarah. We're going to have to go quickly. Sarah is in California and uh, she's on 97.9. Uh, hi, Sarah. Welcome. Hi, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning. I'm um, in 90, 95.7. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways, yes, my question is regarding um, how come baby uh, sometimes they were with them, but toddlers, they can't even talk. They're babies, baby. They stretch their hands like to someone to pick them up, but there's nobody there. Like if they're seeing something and it happened to a friend of mine. And then when I had my baby, it happened to me. Yeah. I was like, what? what can they see something or yeah, an angel or something? I'm, I'm thinking positive, but <laughs> I don't know. Do you, have you heard of that? Do you know anything? 
Okay, I I can actually comment first, Sarah, because I studied angels for over uh, 13 years, and I've heard these stories many times. I will tell you that my son, uh, when he was little in the crib, he would talk to a a blank white wall. He would talk like he was conversing. And and I would just say not to put a lot of focus on that, because it it, to me, it it seems to me personally, it seems very natural. They have a guardian angel. These children are very innocent. Uh, We know that Padre Pio spoke to his guardian angel at a young age. Um, so I think it's quite possible that there is, um, you know, there's that recognition that, that the, the angel is, is making themselves known to that beautiful, innocent child, but I wouldn't, um, overly stress it and just let it, let it develop. What do you, uh, what do you say, Adam? Yeah, for sure. You know, anecdotally over the years, I've, I've heard similar things. Um, and even, you know, yeah, so even a slightly older child who's now speaking um, speaking to a newborn and, and referencing uh, their angel and asking about the newborn's angel. So there's been many beautiful things like this, but what Deb said is right on. Don't focus on it. Don't dwell on it. You know, don't ask a lot of questions about it. Just see it as a grace um, and, you know, continue to pray for and bless your kids. Mm-hmm. Have your home blessed. And, um, yeah, sounds mm-hmm. like a good thing. Yeah, the innocence of children. You know, their angels are very, very close to them. Sarah, thank you so much. We are. You hear the music. We are not going to get to Marianne, Rebecca, and the others. Please, we're going to ask Lori and uh, Carol, our call screeners, please uh, talk to them and get their questions for next month's mailbag show, please. Uh, we want to thank Taylor Van Est, our producer, uh, also our senior producer here at Guadalupe Radio Network, Tim Mott. You guys did a great job. Thank you to the affiliates for carrying the show. For Adam Bly, I'm Debbie Giorgiani. Until next Saturday, have a beautiful and blessed week. We'll see you real soon.